Hello everyone, welcome to Code Enzyme and in this video I will be starting a new series on graph algorithms for CP. Now two days ago I posted the community poll on what topics you want videos on and majority of you voted for graph algorithms so I decided I will make a series on it. Now this is actually quite a very wide topic and uh, almost never ending. Like I, no one can actually cover everything uh, in the graph theory. There is always something new coming. Okay, so what you can do is you can comment down the video on what topics you actually want the theory videos on. For now, uh, I want to focus more on problems. Many of you commented that you wanted uh, the solutions to the CSS problem set, and the, and I should take problems from the code forces side. So I will do that. So if you want a solution to a particular problem, you can give the link in the comments below and uh, maybe I will cover it in the next video. So I, I will cover your specific problems that you have doubt on uh, in the next video that will be coming in this series. Okay. So we have this and uh, I mean, tell me in the comments like if you want me to come live and explain the problems, then we can also do that. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I can go for theory also, I can teach theory, but uh, the problem is uh, there is already so much content on the uh, on YouTube about simple algorithms like BFS and DFS. So I don't want to cover that again and again and it will and it will unnecessarily make my video very long. So people won't click on it. If you still want me to explain theory, kindly comment down the video and I will probably make a separate video on BFS and DFS. Okay. 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 So we will be learning graph algorithms and I decided I will teach you using uh, while solving problems. Okay. So we will discuss a lot of problems in this video. <coughs> so let's say we have this first problem. Uh, this is called counting rooms. Uh, let's read the problem statement. You are given a map of a building and your task is to count the number of rooms. The size of the map is n cross m and each square is either floor or a wall. Now you can walk left, right, up and down through the floor squares. Now the first input has two integers n and m and the height of the map and there are n lines uh, the character describing the map and each character is either floor or wall okay. So let's say we have this let me just copy this thing. So let's say we have this now clearly uh, so this is actually a problem of connected components so connected components okay so let's see what connected components are now i will ask you a basic question uh, let's say we have a graph one two three and we have one more let's say four and five now i will ask you uh, what is the number of graphs that you can see here uh, do you see two graphs or one graph or three graphs uh, like what, what do you actually see now there are only two answers for this you see one graph or do you see two graphs so I will give you some time to think about this and whatever your answer is you can comment down this video so I actually get to know what everyone else was thinking yeah okay so if your answer was two graphs your answer was wrong this is actually a single graph okay like what is the definition of a graph if I ask you how do you define a graph mathematically so a graph is given by the letter G and it is defined a set of vertices and set of edges. So I can define this whole graph as my vertices are 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Okay. And my edges will be, uh, let's say 1, 3 and uh, 2, 3 and 3, 1 and one more 4, 5. Okay. So this whole thing was actually just a single graph. Okay and it can be defined in the single definition like this <laughs> mathematically so if you are read, reading some mathematics book on uh, graph theory you will find such notations and this whole thing is uh, just a single graph so what do we call these like there is something you can see as two right this actually uh, this whole thing was a single graph but why are we seeing it, it as two and if you are seeing it as two there must be a name for this so this whole thing here that you can see well, let me just mark it with red this thing and this thing are not separate graph but these are connected components okay right so uh, so I hope you were able to understand this what connected components actually are 
Now that you know what connected component is, it is actually the same problem here. So let me just rub everything, remove everything from here. And let's try to find out the connected components from here. Now since we have this problem, <clears throat> any problem of connected components is solved using depth, uh, depth for search, DFS. Okay. So we have something like this. And you are asking me, like, what are the number of rooms in here? I mean, clearly, if I run my DFS, every time I see a wall, it does a, it won't give me anything fruitful. Like, if you try running from a DFS from this wall, you will say, okay, I ran into a loop, but uh, so this, uh, I must be having a room here. But how will you run your DFS again? And it will make things complicated. So let's see this from the perspective of rooms, okay? And not from the perspective of walls. So you, what you can do is every time you see a room, uh, this dot means a room, right? So I can say, okay, uh, I encountered a room here. So I will make a DFS and try to visit all the nodes that I can visit from this room, from this node, right? So I can visit uh, these two nodes. So I will mark these two visited and I will also have a count variable. So count will be equals to from zero, it will be converted to one, okay? And then I will go right again and see that, okay, this was not visited. And now I will visit all the nodes that I can visit from this node. Okay. So I can visit this, 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 this. Okay. And then I go again and I see that, okay, now I can't uh, go any anything further. So I'll make this count as two. Okay. And now all these are visited and now I'm straight traversing. And then I found another node that was not visited. So I will make my count equals to three and visit all the nodes that I can, all the rooms that I can visit from this single node. Okay. So these two are visited now. Okay. So now my answer was three. So the output here should be equals to three. So I hope you were able to understand the idea behind this, uh, what connected components are and how to actually go about this. Now let's try to actually code this up. So, I will make a new file and since this, this is the first problem, I will code this and uh, I won't be coding every problem, uh, but I will code the interesting problems. Okay. So let's have a basic template. Uh, why is it not loading? I will remove the unnecessary comments. Okay. So let's have two integers n and m and uh, that is the size of what should I say? And that is the size of uh, uh, the graph, right? And let's have a vector of vector characters because these are characters, right? And this is my graph. And the size is uh, from n plus one to vector graph, uh, vector char, uh, m plus one. Okay. And now I can traverse from i equals to one for j equals to one till m c in graph i j. Okay. And there is something else that I can do. Uh, I mean, I can make this easier. Like if my graph i j is uh, how can I make this easier? Like uh, I will have to write a very big code for this otherwise. So what I can do is actually I can make that make it bool. So if I if I have a boolean vector, then uh, it will make things easier and it, and it will also save a lot of space. So let's take an integer, not integer actually, it should be character, right? So character, uh, sorry. And let's take the input. Now this is the character and uh, let all the values will be equals to false. Now if my character is equals to equals to a hash here. So if my character is a hash, uh, what do we get? Like if it is hash, then I don't need to do anything. But if it is a dot, uh, so I can't, uh, I can't visit it, right? So this graph vector will, uh, will act like my visited array. So if it is a dot, I will say, okay, graph of I and j equals to true okay so we have this and let's say int count equals to zero and now we want to implement a dfs function 
okay so since we want to implement a dfs function um, how do we go about this like uh, i mean there are two ways to do this i can either do it iteratively using a stack or i can use uh, or i can make a recursive function to do this and clearly the recursive function will uh, will be of the same time complexity but with a shorter code so let's all implement a dfs function and uh, i will implement a lambda function here so let's say auto dfs and since so dfs function will call itself so let's make a function variable so it is a void function and it takes one parameter in okay let it, it will take two parameters i and j okay dfs equals to it is a lambda function and yeah and it takes two parameters int i and int j okay we have this now uh, clearly uh, the current uh, currently i am on i and j so i should mark this as visited right so i can say graph of i and j equals to true uh, sorry equals to false so now i can't visit visit, visit this thing again okay and uh, and now i will visit all the neighbors that this graph has so there is something that i can do is i can make this m plus 2 and m plus 2 okay now okay yeah i can do m plus 2 m plus 2 and uh, now i have four ways to go if i am on ij i can go for four uh, i can go in four directions i can go up down left or right so the new coordinates will be uh, like if i can say okay let's just uh, code it hard coded so if i have i plus 1 j if that was equals to true i can say okay dfs of i and j sorry i plus 1 j uh, similarly if uh, if i have i and uh, i minus 1 j then i can say okay to go to i minus 1 j and uh, recursively i can say if i and j plus 1 then i can go for i comma j plus 1 and the last thing if i have i and j minus 1 equals to true then i can go to i and j minus 1 so this is our dfs function and now let's try to see how we can actually count it so we have this and let's say i will put my count here and i will traverse in my graph for i1 for j1 if graph i and j then I can say count plus plus and let's run the DFS here and in the end I can simply see out count and there is actually a mistake here uh, we have to go till m and not n okay so now let's try to run this again and see if it is working and now it gives us a correct answer and uh, let's try to submit this and see so now let's choose the file it is counting rooms and submit Yeah, so our solution got accepted and uh, this was the short code for the DFS algorithm. Now, actually, I also want to talk about the iterative implementation. So, since every recursive function can be coded iteratively using a stack. So, when I mean, should I actually, I, I think I will just show you the code. Uh, I must have made a submission using iterative DFS. Uh, let's see. No, it was, this is recursive. Mm, this is also recursive. Yeah, this is iterative. So what we can do is I, actually I can maintain a stack of pair intent, okay? And then, uh, I mean, this is the iterative function. You can actually see it. Um, you can try to understand it on your own. I won't be explaining this, but basically we are implementing the same recursive function using a stack iteratively. So if you are able to understand this, kindly like this video and uh, let's move on to the next problem.